some people don't know what it is that creates an enterprise like this and puts people to work. Some people, most of them in Washington, tend to think it's government that makes America work. And that a very wise, all-powerful government could be more effective in guiding the economy than individuals pursuing their own dreams. Those guys are wrong. But I happen to believe that a lot of them, including President Obama, are in charge today. And over time, they continue to push government deeper and deeper into the economy and to put more and more barriers and regulations upon the free enterprise sector with the effect that entrepreneurs and innovators become less interested in creating new enterprises, putting more people to work. They pull back. And even during this recession, which of course was begun before our current president took office, even during this recession, they made it more difficult for entrepreneurs and innovators to, begin, to, begin, uh, to grow and begin new enterprises. And they did that by, this is an interesting number, by increasing the rate of regulations by two and a half times. Various departments in, in Washington add regulations every year. The flow of new regulations went up two and a half times under this president compared to the last president. And uh, the senator just talked about the special tax that was singled out for you. Why you? I don't know. But they decided that people in the medical device business should have to have a 2.5% excise tax. Now that number doesn't sound very big. 2.5%. Except it's a tax on your revenues, not a tax on your profit. And so it adds up to 4 or $5 million a year. And that means either higher prices for consumers or reducing the number of employees this enterprise could have. Or both. And most likely it's some of both. And that is simply the wrong way for America to put more Americans back to work. One of the reasons I'm running is to replace Barack Obama with someone who understands how the private sector works. I spent my life in business. 25 years starting businesses, running a business that was in trouble, helping build a business of my own to become a, a world leader. We got a lot of folks running on the Republican side. Well, not that many. It used to be a lot of folks. It's down now to four. I, I'm the only one who spent the majority of his career in the private sector. I understand what it takes to create jobs and grow jobs. I became a fiscal conservative by being a business person. I don't think you can be a liberal business person financially. If you are, you'll go broke. In business, you got to realize you can't spend more money than you take in. And yet we have in Washington a, a malady that affects so many there, not just Senator, <laughs> but many others, that somehow think it's okay to spend money that they don't have and to borrow money from China or from others to pay for it and pass that burden on to your families and to your kids. I, I, one of the people I'm running against, uh, Senator Santorum, goes to Washington, calls himself a, a, uh, a budget hawk. Then after he's been there a while, he says he's no longer a budget hawk. Well, I am a, a budget hawk. I don't want to spend more money than we take in. I, I, I don't believe it's appropriate for us to keep raising the debt ceiling every year. He voted five times to raise the debt ceiling without getting compensating cuts in spending. During his time in the Senate, only two terms, the size of the federal government grew 80%. When Republicans go to Washington and spend like Democrats, you can have a lot of spending. And that's what we've seen over the last several years. It's time, in my view, for us to do something that we talk about but rarely have done, and that is cut the amount of federal spending.